um, Zorak GX deck. And it looks like we have the names switched for these players. We're going to try to get that reversed back. But right. yes, uh, Frank is on the left. Ian is on the right. Yes, and it looks like Frank has started with a Kartana. Not the greatest start here. You know, it's not the best uh, usually, but it does leave an option for just a turn two Blade GX. Take a prize, right? Not usually your best option early on in the game. Usually you kind of like to leave that as a surprise option later right. on, but something he could do on his second turn if he doesn't have anything better. There could be far worse options here. Absolutely. We see Frank with that turn one Bridget getting that into play. Going to put a DCE onto this active Kartana, maybe trying to set up for a Gale Blade, which would do 70 damage and shuffle it back into the deck. Funny enough, we'll have to see if that's what he does. Indeed, we do see him play down another Zoroa, Zoro, uh, giving him three on the bench, three potential trades in the coming turns. Yes, really a solid start over on Frank's side. We're going to see if he has anything else. No, going to go ahead and pass it over to... Ian, who is on the right, going to get a Parallel City out, putting Frank down to three Pokemon on his bench. Let's see what else Ian has. Doesn't look like very much is going to be going on. It looks like, actually, Ian doesn't have any supporters at all. It looks like he's actually passed for a couple of turns here. Sorry, trying to get these things figured out with the uh, names and everything, but we'll see what uh, else Frank is going to do on his turn. Looks like he's going to get a choice band on to that Garbodor, putting it in play. That Trash Lanch, of course. Not going to be doing too much until there are some items in Ian's discard pile. That's not uh, something that he's been able to have yet since he hasn't played any supporters or items or anything yet. So we're going to get that name situation fixed up very soon, guys. Don't worry. And we'll see what else Frank is going to do here on his turn. So, taking a new hand of six here off of this Cynthia, looking for some Zolwark GXs to start getting that trade ability. Of course, such a powerful effect, uh, being able to discard one card from your hand and get two cards. And there you go, look at that. The we've names got, are back. We've got it figured out, guys. We know what we're doing, no worries. <laughs> we see the Rainbow Energy come on to Kartana GX. We'll see what Frank goes for. Could just take a prize here with Blade GX, maybe going for a potential Gale Blade doing 70 damage. But Tapu Koko actually is resistant to metal, so it oh. wouldn't do that much damage, only 50 damage. Right, but we do see before he attacks, he does have the Parallel City down now. Yep, Ian Parallel city Frank last turn, and now we see Frank returning the favor after a Field Blower came into play. It looks like we did just see a Gale Blade doing 50 damage, I think, after that resistance. And choosing not to shuffle it back into the deck, maybe Ooh. wants to get that attack again. No, Ian just passes once, once again. again. Oh my goodness, this is not good for Ian Rob. Regional champion, of course, this year in St. Louis. Frank Diaz, for those who don't know, top four at Worlds in 2010. One of the game's, um, you know, most known names. A super good player who's played for a very, very long time. We see Zorak GX coming into play. What else are we going to have happen here on Frank's turn? See, it looks like he's getting ready to trade once. Yep, gets trading into the two, away. Trading right into that Zorak GX allowing him to get a second trade-off potentially, which he does right now. Drawing a fresh two cards out of his deck for the price of one. Did have to get rid of a puzzle of time to do it, though, valuing the other cards in his hand a little more. Looks like an Ultra Ball will come out. Maybe we'll see a Garbotoxin Garbodor come into play. Looks like that's what he's going to eye up. If he has this in combination with a Pokemon tool, he will be able to yeah, ability lock in and limit his top deck options because you know that's what ian needs at this point is a top deck in order to get out of this dead draw situation garbatoxin is now activated thanks to that float stone yep frank throwing down another tre trubbish and retreating that Kartana into the Zoroark with the double colorless energy. Yep. Actually, Kartana would have had to three-hit KO that Tapu Koko. Oh definitely, my goodness. Definitely not what you want to do if you're Frank, so going to go ahead and take that prize where he can. Let's see if Ian was able to top deck anything. Looking at his hand a little more closely, looks like it's going to be a Guzma. Brings up this Garbodor. Frank put a choice band on this, and now this Garbodor is not going to be able to move unless Frank finds his own field blower in a floatstone or maybe a Guzma. And if Frank did find a Guzma, it looks like he did. 
I could see him maybe bringing up the Kartana GX and using Gale Blade yep. to actually just shuffle it back into the deck so that he can get these energies back so that he can use them on some of his other attackers. No, going to just leave it in play, though. Ian is going to concede the game. Oh has nothing God. he can play. That is a very quick game. One here in the top four. Got a feel for Ian after Dude, that one. Out of all the time for this to happen, top four never wants... You never want that to happen. Here. No, absolutely not. There is a lot on the line here. A chance at the finals after you win this one. Of course, both of these players at this point have already won $1,500, but the winner of this game will be guaranteed at least $2,500. Of course, first place in this tournament will take home $5,000, second place $2,500, and then the top four players, as we see here, will all get fifteen. dollars So lots on the line as we move forward. Indeed. So, going forward, we can only assume we want Ian to draw more here, right? <laughs> Absolutely. He played a Parallel City and a Guzma. I believe that was the only two cards he played that game. Oh my goodness. That might be the least amount of cards you could play and lose without it being a literal turn one donk. So we'll see these guys shuffle up, and yeah, Ian will get the advantage of going first. And... Uh, Looks like we'll just, you know, get those last couple of rifles in. These guys want to make sure this deck is nice and randomized so that they can draw a nice usable hand of seven. Looks like we're going to just get a nice little pile shuffle going and try to, you know, get it all nice and randomized. These guys have plenty of time. That game one was very, very fast. Indeed, 68 minutes to go still. Yeah, plenty of time for two full games. If it comes to that, Ian's going to definitely be trying to win two so he can get to the W here in this match. Of course, Gustavo and Daniel Altavia are playing in the other top four match. The winner of that one will play the winner of this one, and today we will be crowning a Toronto TCG regional champion. And we will get this going. And this matchup honestly seems like it is fairly close. Both of these Zoark Reliant decks. Frank is playing a little bit different of a version than what we have seen from some other players. No bursting balloons in his list. And it's funny enough, Frank was the top seed heading into day two, top seed heading into top eight. And we saw the same thing in Brazil, actually. Um, Fabian was the top seed heading into day two, undefeated with this same deck, made top eight. And we see it doing the same thing here in Toronto. Exactly. So it looks like we have game two starting right now. Uh, Frank has two Pokemon yep. ready to go. Two Trubbish versus one Wimpod. Uh, Ian Rob obviously going first here, going with, it seems, the natural Bridget. Infinitely better than his start yeah. last game. Ian is jumping for joy inside, I am sure. Very excited to be able to actually play this next game. We do see three Zeruas hit the bench and... Um, you know, no Wimpods coming into play, though. Maybe just wanting to value getting those turn two trades. Definitely. So he ends up grabbing three Zoroark. Mark that Frank. Frank one and getting three Zoroarks potentially next turn. Gonna just be looking through his deck, trying to figure out what, uh, what his prizes were. And we'll see what Frank is able to do on his first turn. Maybe Ian can get a turn one attachment, potentially. That would be good. Always getting a grass on Wimpod would be nice. Can I actually retreat into a Zerua? Oh, interesting. We'll see that pass over to Frank. Does he get his own Bridget? We'll have to see. Does, Can't. does not look like he has it in hand, but he does go for the Ultra Ball, discarding two cards. Most likely getting that Lele so he can Wonder Tag for that supporter. Yep, did not get it in that opening hand, but has the cards that will allow him to find it. So Ultra Ball being a very good way to get Tapu Lele out. And yeah, we'll just have to see what Frank decides to get here with this Ultra Ball. Maybe if he has another supporter, he could just get a Zerua and maybe try to get Sycamore and find other cards. But I think he is going to go ahead and Tapu Lele here. Use Wonder Tag, probably going to find that Bridget. Mm-hmm. We just see it be so important in these Zoark GX focused decks, getting those Zeruas in play very fast, very consistently, allowing you to set up multiple Zoark GX as quickly as possible. Sure enough, there's a Bridget hitting the discard pile. With two Trubbish in play, Frank may just go for three Zeruas, but I could also see getting two Zeruas and one Trubbish, since it's pretty likely that Ian would be able to knock out Frank's active Trubbish this coming turn. Right. All he needs is a Zork and a DCE and one more Pokemon in play. 
Here he goes. You, he at least has those two Zoro right now, looking through his deck for the final card. Making yep. a look at his hand just to make sure what he has will coincide. There you go. That third Trubbish coming down. Yep, opting that, that, Frank deciding that that's going to be the best option for him. Just kind of thinking, hey, it's likely this Trubbish is going to hit the discard pile this coming turn. I want to have this option available to me still by having multiple Trubbishes in play. Definitely. Going to go ahead and throw those guys down onto the bench. Does get a Floatstone to the active. Tapu Lele as well. Going to be able to energy drive, just do a little bit of damage here. Try to make it easier to knock out this Zoark later on in the game. Right. A little is better than nothing at this point. We do see that Zorua evolve right away. Trade comes out, discards a card, draws him two more. See if he can find that DCE. Does need one more Pokemon as well. Can still play a supporter card. Parallel City. This is a brutal Ooh. Parallel City. Frank is forced to discard two of these Pokemon, and he doesn't want to discard any of them. Right. He goes for one Trubbish. What does he do here? You know, it's really tough. He doesn't know what's in Ian's hand. Ooh. There's a chance that after discarding one of those Pokemon, that Ian's just going to be able to get a DCE, Zoark, and a Guzma and take out the other one, leaving him with only one of a certain Pokemon in play. And there's that DCE. Looks like Ian won't have that full combo I was mentioning, but now he will at least be able to ride a speeding and do a decent chunk to this Tapu Lele. And Frank only has that one Trubbish in play now. Mm -hmm. And there we see that ride of speeding come down, giving that... Tapu Lele, 80 damage. Yep, should set it up to be knocked out in the coming turns. We're seeing a Professor Sycamore drawing seven new cards on Frank's side. Seeing if he can maybe find that Garbotoxin Garbodor. He didn't. It does look like he has the, gar the uh, Treshelanche. Yeah, he'll also want to try to find some Zoark GXs. I don't see any in his hand yet. He did get that Enhanced Hammer, which could be huge. Definitely going to slow Ian down just a bit, not having any energy on the field. We do see that puzzle. Yeah, getting it traded away. Oh, no, playing a single no, he puzzle. Was playing wow. a single puzzle. Oh, yeah. yeah, no Zoarks in play to trade with, of course. This is not good for Frank Diaz. It's never a good time when you see a single puzzle. Detrimental last round of yesterday when we saw Tord Reklev having to play multiple single puzzles oh. and none of them finding him what he needed. Unfortunately, he did tie that game. Frank is going to go ahead and energy drive, doing 40 more damage to the Zorg, putting it up to a total of 80. Right. Trade number one comes out from Ian. Wants to find more Zorg GXs. Needs to find a replacement energy card. There is one Zorg. Here comes a second trade as well. Could maybe get a Galissapod Ace of Roller play. That would be extremely good if he can pull it off. Max Potion, though, will allow him to fully heal all of that damage Frank has done. One more Pokemon in play this turn. That Wimpod will allow him to ride a speeding 400 damage, which will knock out this Lele. He even gets the Galissapod to try to prepare it for next turn. But Ian has still not played a supporter these past couple turns. Oh, not at all. We do see that Trashelange. Garbodor come up with the Floatstone. Yep. Finally, Frank finds one of his Zoroarks being able to start trading away. Yep, I'm just going to follow that up with an in. He's going to put Ian down to four cards at this point. He knows Ian hasn't played anything, but he just took two prizes. He still has another top tech. Two Zorark GXs in hand. He wants to limit his cards as much as possible, and Frank just re needs to reset his hand as well and try to find some new cards to work with. Definitely. Both players shuffling up, making sure everything is sufficiently randomized. Absolutely. Frank is going to want to find some more Zoark GX here. One more is all he can really find since he only has the one Zerua, but he'll also want to find some replacement basic Pokemon as well and really wants to get rid of this Parallel City in play. If he can find a Field Blower, that's what he would need to do it. He is limited to a bench of three right now, which is really hindering kind of his setup. We saw him have to discard so many of his basic Pokemon previously. Definitely. Here comes a trade, discarded a Cynthia. Not sure that I see an energy card in that hand. I see a Sycamore that he can use for the next turn, but if he doesn't have an energy card, he's not going to be able to do anything here. Frank does manage to get that second Zoroark out, which will allow him another trade should he go for it. And yes, he does, discarding a Sycamore for an extra two. It looks like he ended up drawing another Zoroark potentially off of that. Can't Unsure. quite see... We'll have to see if he did get that energy card or not. If not, Frank Diaz may just have to pass here. And this is a huge opening for Ian Robb to get a huge window of lead in this game. Frank 
benching the Kartana GX here, allowing yeah. it to use that slice off ability, discarding that double colorless energy, and he does get the Zoark GX. He can use Riot of Speeding here and do 80 to Ian Zoark. Definitely. Trade number one on Ian's side gets rid of an Ultra Ball, finds him two more cards. What does he have to work with after getting in on Frank's turn? Trade number two gets rid of a Float Stone. What can he find? Maybe he can find another healing option. Acerola Max Potion again would be great if he can puzzle it back. Just, I think that's what this game is going to come down to. A game of attrition looks like uh, Ian actually able to pull off an Acerola, heal that Zoark completely, trades one more time, and brings this Orangaru from Ultra Prism to the active spot. Looks like we're going to see a Grass Energy attachment. Could have gone for a first impression this turn, but actually going to value putting back some of the resources Frank has gotten rid of. We've seen Enhanced Hammer. We've seen Slice Off. These have gotten rid of two of Ian's DCEs, and he might target one of his other options as well, something like a Max Potion. Just a really useful card to put back in the deck to use later on in this game. Definitely. Do Looks see... like it's going to be two DCEs, and I think that was a Max Potion? It looked like it. Either way, three very good cards to be putting back. Absolutely. So those are things he'll have an option to use on the next turn. Or in the coming turns. Over on Frank's side. Needs to find a field blower if he oh. wants to use Zoark GX to knock out this Orangu. We're actually attaching a Rainbow Energy to Kartana GX. As well as a Floatstone to that active Zorak. Might we see a Blade GX this turn? I sure hope so. <laughs> Blade GX, a very, very, very useful um, GX attack for anyone who doesn't know. For just one metal energy, it just says, take a prize card. Simple enough. Little uh, text there and just, you know, drawing one single prize card. Doesn't do damage, but you get that prize. Very useful. After this end, we'll have to see what these players' hands look like. Right. Frank may be looking for a field blower so he can put two more basic Pokemon in play. So Riotus beating would knock out this Orangaroo. Not too much else in Ian's discard pile, though, so I don't think Frank would... You know, sometimes you don't want to give your opponent too many turns of using resource management, putting too many things back, but it's still early in the game. Ian's already put his most valuable cards back right. last turn. But Ian also has the potential of putting just random items back just so that Trash Orange can never go off and hurt him. Absolutely. Certainly a very useful attack in this matchup. We're going to see trade number one. Discards a Bridget. Finds him two more cards. Can trade once more. Let's see what he wants to get rid of. Lots of energies in his hand right now. Trade number two is a Zoroark GX. Looks like that Drampa GX, not going to be super useful at the moment, but can definitely come into play at some point in this game. Going to play two Puzzle of Time, we'll get him back any two cards from his discard pile that he wants. Looks like he's opting for the Trubbish as well as the Field Blower, using that Field Blower right away, benching that Trubbish down. Yep, we'll see him probably bench that Drampa GX. There yep. it is. And now we will see Riotus beating, doing 120 damage, which will be enough to take the knockout on a Ringaru from Ian's side. Ian promoting that Zorark GX. Trading away right away that Bridget he drew for another two cards. Playing down that Evo Soda. Yep, going to just get another Zoark GX with this. Adds another trade to this. Ian's got three Zoarks set up, and he is definitely feeling good about that. Definitely. His engine is revving right now. Absolutely. Being able to trade for essentially six cards for the price of three is fantastic. Yep, and also one of the main things about this ability that makes it so good is it allows you to thin. You can discard cards with the trade ability that you don't want to draw later on in the game. Right. We do see him go for that Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag going into his deck for a supporter. What do you think he's eyeing right now? You know, it is interesting to, to wonder. He may be getting a Mallow. He does have that one more trade ability available to him if he wants to guarantee like a certain attachment this turn. But he's going for a Guzma. Maybe already has the energy in hand. And this could be a big power play for Ian this turn. Yes, definitely. Being able to attach and bring up a Galissapod would be... Great right about now. Yeah, and he could take a knockout on Frank's Trubbish, potentially. That would take that out of play, eliminate Frank's option of finding Garbatox and Garbador in this game at this point, or at least in the coming turns. Right. 
did look like he was about to play that Guzma right there, but opting to check his discard right now. I'm not sure he has that energy. I feel like he would have played it down by now. Yeah, maybe so. We'll have to see. Bringing a grass energy to the front, could he have two Puzzle of Time in his hand as well? Not okay. quite sure yet. Guzma will come out. Actually going to bring up the trash Alanche Garbage. We're going to bring Galissapod to the active spot. Double puzzle. puzzle. Can find that grass energy. As well as it looks like the Acerola. Yep. Yeah, Grass Energy Acerola is going to leave Ian with great options next turn. Can recycle this Galissapod, erase any damage that Frank does, and he takes a prize. Goes down to three remaining. Frank only has taken one prize this game. Not looking good on Frank's side. Despite having a great setup, it's just not the ability to take prizes. Yeah, it's been a little tough over on Frank's side of the field. Ian, I think, has been pretty good about his item usage. You know, Trash Lanch will eventually become a factor. These Zoroark decks just have to trade so much, have to get rid of so many cards. You know, Frank may be okay not getting Garbotoxin in play and might just want to Trash Lanch from here on out. Yeah. Going for trade number one, discarding a Mew EX. Yep, he doesn't want to put that Mew EX in play. That is an easy knockout for Zoark or Galissapod. Only 120 HP, and both Zoark and Galissapod can easily hit that 120 number. Second trade he had there was for a Floatstone, getting him two extra cards. Looks like he might have... Not sure if that was another uh, Enhanced Hammer or not. It could be. No special energy on Ian's side right now, but definitely a card that can come into play at some point in the game. It's a Guzma, actually. Guzma's going to bring up the Wimpod, and we might see a Blade GX this turn. Could take the prize and make it so Ian... Like, Ian needs to find his Floatstone to move this Wimpod or play a Guzma this turn. Hatching the DC. Actually, Gale Blade here can knock out Wimpod. Wimpod does only have the 70 HP, and Frank would recycle that Kartana, put it back into the deck. He can use Slice Off once again later on, but actually choosing not to shuffle it back in. Interesting. You know, I think I understand Frank's reasoning here. If he shuffles it back in, he has to promote something, right? You right. always have to have an active Pokemon in the Pokemon trading card game, and he doesn't really have anything he wants to send up. Ian does get a floatstone, a field blower on that floatstone on Frank's side, so he does have access to his trade abilities. We'll see what else he's able to draw here. Trading once again, getting rid of a grass energy. Trading again. See if any of these cards can be helpful. But benching down a Wimpod. Yep, wanting to keep those in place so he can, you know, get that cycle potentially of Acerola looping. Gonna use an Enhanced Hammer. Gets rid of the DCE on Zoark GX. Guzma brings up that Garbodor. Zoark comes to the active. DCE being attached for turn, and Rydus beating will knock it out. Wow. Ian Rob goes down to two prizes. Frank promoting that Zoroark with the Floatstone. We'll have to see what Frank is going to identify as his out here. What can he do? Going to trade away that Rainbow Energy. Finds two more cards. See some Zaguzma. There are certainly some options there in that hand. You know, Frank's hand is massive. He has lots of different options. Um, but just nothing he really likes right now, I guess. There's, you know, he's... Having a hard time figuring out what he wants to do. Rescue Stretcher being played. Maybe going to shuffle back some of that Zoroark line or just no. put another Trebuchet on the bench. Baiting on that rainbow going for it. I think he's trying to set up another Trash Lanch here now that he's lost his. Yeah, I think we're at the point where Ian has played multiple items. Um, I think we were just seeing if Frank has traded more than once. He's only traded once at this point. Still has access to one more trade. It looks like he'll get rid of a Choice Band. Ended up looking like a Ultra Ball yeah, for one of his cards. I think it was an Ultra Ball and a Puzzle of Time. Look at this. Once again, the same play as last turn. Guzma brings up Wimpod, and we see the Gale Blade. Going to do 70 damage and knock out a Wimpod. If there was one attack you told me about that I was going to hear on stream today and told me it was going to be Gale Blade, I would have called you a liar. <laughs> I would have honestly called myself a liar. <laughs> We've only seen Cartana in one other match 
during this entire weekend. That's right. We have seen it once before. It uh, has been useful with Blade GX for some of these Zoar Garbodor decks. We're going to see Ian over on his turn, trading away a couple of times, still has access to one more, gets rid of a Galissapod. Two Wimp Bumps in the discard pile means that Galissapod might not be able to come into play this game. And we'll see what he has to work with. Pretty sizable hand on his side. can just swing into this Kartana, but you don't really want to swing into it because Frank could just erase all of the damage you do by shuffling it back in with Gale Blade. Uh, Ian doesn't have a way to take a one-hit KO. But if he does force Frank to shuffle in, there's it means Frank isn't able to use that GX and just take that one prize, bringing it down to a 2-2 game. Yeah, I mean, Frank could potentially bench it later on in the game and just get that bench attach and use it. Right. And he would be able to use that Gale Blade. But then Frank would also, if he used Gale Blade, would have to send up a Pokemon. And that's basically a free hit for Ian on one of his Zoroks, potentially. And I don't right. think Frank wants that. Not at all. It's a tricky situation. Yeah, Ian deciding here with Mallow, what does he want to get? Mallow, of course, the supporter card going to allow him to put two cards on top of his deck in any order and then trade. Such a good synergy. Uh, we'll be able to draw those two cards after discarding one from his hand. Right. We've seen this combo be good in the past in the history of the Pokemon TCG. There was actually an old card called Oracle that did literally the same thing as Mallow and a Delcaddy that lets you discard an energy from your hand, drawing three cards. This combo coming back once again between Zoark and Mallow. See a DCE being attached to that Glycopod, potentially yep. coming in for a cross and cut GX. Yeah. Ian could use Crossing Cut GX here and knock out this Kartana. How many prizes does he have left? Does he only have two he only prizes? He has two. He hasn't GX attacked yet, has he? No, his oh. GX gun is still up. All Ian has to do is retreat his Zoark GX and use Crossing Cut GX. Oh, no, he does not have the choice band, of he course. One more card he needed. I apologize, guys. I thought Ian was missing something, but no, I was the one missing something. He did need that choice band and doesn't have it yet. Frank's going to go ahead and use his first trade, drawing it two more cards. Thin deck over on Frank's side of the field. We'll see what he does. He may want to use that Gale Blade attack and shuffle this Zoark back into the deck. Excuse me, shuffle this Kartana GX back into the deck. Let's see what Frank is going to do. Looks like he's playing an Ultra Ball, just checking out his other options. Looks like we're getting an update here on the last game. We're going to try to figure out who the winner was of the last game. It looks like it has completed. We'll try to let you guys know here very soon. Of the, Excuse me, the other top four match. Over on Frank's side, still kind of trying to figure out what he wants to do. Does end up playing down that Treasure Lounge Garbodor. Yep. At this point in the game, Ian has probably played many, many item cards and will uh Trash Lounge will come in and to have a big effect. Gustavo has sadly lost. Uh that means that Daniel Altavia did win the the player from the top eight match we streamed previously, gets the win and is gonna move on to the finals. Uh, we're going to see Daniel in the finals potentially trying to win another regional championship. Versus the winner of this match. Absolutely. So. We still have this match to worry about here. Frank Diaz playing and in. Going to shuffle his hand into his deck. Ian will only get two cards here. Frank will grab three himself. All right, two cards are running inside. What does he find? Frank gets three on his. We'll see maybe if he uses that Gale Blade. Will he shuffle it back into the deck? Looks like he is going to. Gale Blade does 70 damage, and Kartana GX is going back into the deck. Frank opts to send up the Zorak GX. You don't want to just let Ian take the knockout on the Kartana by leaving it in play, but it also does feel kind of bad to have to let your Zorak take a hit. All right, trade number one over on Ian's turn. 
Looks like another one getting rid of that Mew EX. Ian has a very thin deck as well. We're going to trade one more time. Let's see what Ian wants to do here with this turn. That Garbotoxin Garbodor, excuse me, that Trash Lunch Garbodor is certainly a threat. Definitely this late in the game. Yeah, Ian has a very, very thin deck. I'm sure he's played a lot of his item cards. Like Frank is uh, counting him up. Ian could win the game if he had, was, was able to get off some sort of Guzma plus Choice Band play onto that Drampa GX over on break, Frank's bench, but does not have that option. Uses Acerola. Gonna bring Zorark GX to the active spot, but heals off that damage that Frank did last turn. And that's sort of what these matchups become, it seems like. It's like a cat and mouse game of who can heal more, who can keep their damage in play, who gets their damage to stick. And uh, Frank is going to have his turn here, and we'll see what he's able to maneuver. Hmm. Ian eyeing up his discard here, seeing what resources he's used. Frank will also take the time to look at his. Yep, yeah, maybe just want to get an item count or something like that. How much damage is this Trash Lynch going to actually do? There need to be 12 items in the discard for Four, it to matter. Five, five items six, here. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, not quite enough for the Trash Lynch to have too big of an effect. Needs to be that 12, like I said, in order to get the one hit KO on to Zoart GX. No tools on Ian's side for Frank to potentially field blower, so no more items can hit the discard pile on Frank's turn. Right. Frank does trade away that Tapu Lele. Just two cards left in his oh deck. Oh my goodness. Looks like Ian's low on cards as well. Yeah, both of these guys. That's what these Zark matchups, these mirror matches can be sometimes. Just a war of attrition. Who has the most resources left as these players are both low on cards in their deck? Frank has opted to play Acerola, bringing up that damage Zoroark, promoting the Drampa. And this is a little risky from Frank. Wow. He can Righteous Edge and discard this energy, but there is a chance that Ian can get the Choice Band. He does. He, does. he gets the DCE wow. to retreat the active Choice Band on the bench, and he will be able to use Crossing Cut GX to take the KO on Frank's Drampa GX. After a abysmal start from Ian Game 1, he wins Game 2, and we're going to head into a Game 3 here in this Top 8 match. Excuse me, Top 4 match. Going into Game 3, what needs to be done? done by any of these players in order to seal a victory. You know, Ian wants a repeat of that game, I think. Things went pretty well for him throughout. Frank just seemed to struggle throughout this game, honestly. I think that Trash Lynch is incredibly important against these Zoark decks, but Ian was very smart with his item usage, so it's going to kind of come down to how many items does Ian have to play to get set up, and can Trash Lynch become a factor in this game? We didn't see too much from Garbatox, and it was in play for a turn or two on Frank's side. I think... Treasure Lanch is slightly better than Garbotoxin maybe at this point in this matchup, but uh, Garbotoxin is definitely still a tool that can use. A win condition for Frank could potentially be a uh, Righteous Edge with Drampa into a Garbotoxin plus N combo, getting rid of an energy and inning Ian to a low hand size, hoping he misses Field Blower. So maybe if Fra Frank can set up a play like that in the later game after Ian has taken a few prizes, he can manage to win a game like this in, top, in the th game three of this top four. Once again, a lot on the line for these two players. They have already guaranteed themselves $1,500. A really solid weekend of Pokemon, if you ask me, coming away with $1,500. But the winner of this game will be guaranteed a minimum $2,500 and a shot at five grand if they are to win this tournament. And, of course crowning themselves Toronto Regional Champion. Not just that, championship points. Absolutely, 200 championship points to first place as well. And super important when it comes to this top 16 race. I don't believe Frank is super close to the top 16 running. You know, he is a very good player, but I don't think he goes to as many of these tournaments no. as a lot of the competitors in this top 16 race do. Uh, Ian is definitely in contention for that, though. Like we've said, regional champion this season, made top 16 at an international championship, has performed very well at other regionals, so he has lots and lots of CP and has found himself in that top 16. Also, Ian, worth noting, a first-year master. Wow. So There a, have been a few like that. Absolutely. This age of seniors have been showing up. 
Absolutely, and we saw how good some of these players are earlier when we got to cast the seniors and juniors finals. Some of these young names that may not look that familiar, you might be remembering later on in the future of the Pokemon TCG. Definitely. I have a feeling those juniors we showed that were in Brazil oh, yeah. will be around for a while. Absolutely. All right. So we have started game three here with a Mew EX on Ian's side as well as a Drampa on Frank's side. And oh my oh. goodness, all Frank has is that single puzzle. His hand looks totally oh. unplayable. We see a Mew EX. It looks like a couple DCEs, a choice band. No supporter options, no Ultra Balls. And that top three didn't look much better, honestly. This is not a good situation for Frank. We'll have to see what he can do. Looks like it's just going to be a DCE to the active. The good news is that next turn, he could big wheel. He if, definitely could. If he lives. And that's what he's going to be opting to do, almost certainly, since he didn't find anything in those Puzzle of Time cards. <sighs> just a pass over to Ian. Oof. So he does end up with a natural Bridget. Much better start than Frank. Absolutely. Going to get his Zeruas in play. Probably a Wimpod as well. Wanting to set up these Stage 1 Evolution Pokemon. Definitely. There you are. Two uh, Zora and one Wimpod hitting the field. Wants to leave himself with plenty of options. So we're going to see where he goes from the rest of this game. Uh, gonna shuffle up. Unfortunately, Mew EX is not a very good starter for Frank. Or, excuse me, a very good starter for Ian. It only has 120 HP, and it gives up two prize right. cards. It's very fra While a very versatile Pokemon, it is oh, fragile. Oh my god. We actually see uh, Mew EX getting the DCE and using Righteous Edge because wow. of its versatile ability and taking that double color synergy off of Frank's side of the field. Insane. It looks like Frank did find something on the top of his deck. Not sure what it is. He did get to choose what he wanted to put there. It might be a he Professor have, Sycamore. It might be a Sycamore, but he does have the DCE in hand to put another one back on, as well as the Choice Band. Yeah, he can Righteous Edge this Mew. Could also go for a Big Wheel, but looks like he's just going to go ahead and Professor Sycamore before he does any of that and draw a fresh hand of seven. So he did find a supporter in those top three. Maybe trying to slow roll Ian a little bit. Maybe make him think, hey, I don't have a very good hand, but I'm going to be finding a Sycamore, actually, this next turn. But at the same time, he did have to discard some important resources. Looks like we did see that Righteous Edge doing 50 damage and discarding the DCE from the Mew. Ian opting to play a Cynthia this turn for his supporter, refreshing his hand to a new six. Cynthia being one of the uh, more prominent cards of this uh, format right now as Absolutely. a supporter. Yeah, I think if we had to go back through every stream game and count every supporter played, Cynthia would be the one that was played the most super uh, good consistency card and making it known here in top four. Ian Rob dropping down a Zoroark GX onto the field, allowing him to start his trade engine with a second Zoroark GX hitting. He is sitting pretty right now. Absolutely. Has access to one more trade if he wants it. Will be able to find more cards. Does not have any energy in play yet. We'll have to see if he finds one in his hand. Discards the counter catcher. That is a card that could be useful at some point in the game, but going to have to discard it, valuing the other cards more than what he has. Grass Energy to the active, and he'll just be able to Righteous Edge discard this double colorless once again. Things are not looking good on Frank's side right now, though he does have, I think, another double colorless in hand should he want to attach, but at this point, with that Mew being able to use Versatile to copy, I'm not sure he wants to. Yeah, it's certainly going to be an interesting choice here from Frank. What does he do with this active Drampa? It's kind of stuck here, right? He put a choice band on it to do a little more damage, but now it's not going to be able to move. He can attach an energy to it, but there's a chance it just gets discarded. Looks like he's debating it. The fact that his deck only plays special energy, and Drampa being that one card that usually is the one taking out special energy on the other side, being used against him is just not good. Absolutely. So uh, Field Blower actually going to get rid of that Choice Band, hoping to find a Floatstone here, I think, on Frank's side. And a Zorg GX does get a Double Color Synergy. Frank will need to find a Choice Band and another Pokemon if he wants to knock out the Mew this turn. So we'll see off of these six cards. Does he get those Pokemon? That's probably what he needs. Fresh hand of six for Frank. Ian does also get six. No knockouts yet. We've had a couple of turns go here. 
but uh, just a lot of energy discarding back and forth yes. from both of these players. And eventually someone is going to have to run out. Who yeah. will it be first? Well, actually Frank is the only one that can technically fully run out since Ian does have that Oranguru. He can almost always put energies back into his deck, but uh, we'll see if the game ever gets to that point. I don't think Frank has found what he needs quite yet. I think he still can trade. Trade number one comes out, finds an in. Does he find any other Pokemon? Would love to get some more Zeruas in play, I think. He needs either two more Pokemon or a Pokemon and a Choice Band if he wants to get the knockout on Mew this turn. He does find that Trubbish, but I don't think he has many more options to get something out. It looks like there might be an Ultra Ball in there, but I'm not sure. Ultra Ball could be costly if there's a lot of important resources in his hand. We'll have to see what Frank decides to do on this turn. Also, of course, does need the Floatstone to move this Drampa, so that's another piece of the combo he could be missing. We see him just a pass over to Ian's turn. Gonna trade, draws himself two new cards. Could maybe see him use Muse... Uh, it could retreat the Mew since it has the Grass Energy, maybe getting a double colorless on to a Zoark. If he got one more Pokemon and a Choice Band, he'd actually take a knockout on Drampa. Opting to go for a Wonder Tag via that Tepi Lele. He has just dropped down. Could go for a Mallow play here, potentially, to try to guarantee him the cards he needs to get a knockout this turn. But could just try to refresh his hand through other means. Or if he has other better cards in his hand, could even see a really strong Guzma play. Mm -hmm. Lots of options for Ian, depending on what is in his hand. We'll have to see what he decides to grab with this Wonder Tag. Looks like he has potentially found what he is looking for, just looking at his hand to make sure it's exactly what he wants. Going for the Professor Sycamore. So just needing to draw some more cards, it looks like. No, has oh, the Mallow in hand. Has what he needs in the hand. Gonna use Mallow, finds the two cards, and I'm pretty sure Ian is gonna be able to get a knockout on, Zo on this, uh, excuse me, on this Drampa GX this turn. Has a lot of different ways he could actually do it. He could get a Galispod and a Grass Energy retreat and do it with a Choice Band. He could get a DCE and a Choice Band. Do it with Zoark. He could even get a Grass and a Choice Band and do it with the active Mew EX. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see what he does. Does find Enhanced Hammer as well. Gets rid of one of Frank's energies in play. There's the Choice Band. There's the Double Colorless. Retreating the Mew EX. Riotus beating Wheel Deal 140 and knock out this Drampa GX. Taking two prizes on the inside of the field. And from here, what does Frank have available to him? He ends up promoting that Zoroark GX, protecting that frail little Trubbish. But at this point, I don't know what else can be really done here. Yeah, it seems kind of tough. I don't think Ian has played that many item cards, so I don't think trash Lanch will come into effect quite yet. And Frank has not been able to find any other Zeruas. Trade number one comes out. There's a Trubbish, but still no more Zeruas on Frank's side of the field. Here we go, looking at his hand. What does he have available to him? Looks like there is a double puzzle. If he has more resources in his discard pile, he can find some Pokemon to put back on his bench, maybe. He has a lot of special energy in his discard pile. Definitely. Could use the puzzles to find those. Like, one DC, two DCs were discarded by Righteous Edge. Mm -hmm. We also saw one get discarded by Enhanced Hammer, so he's already has at least three in that discard pile. Exactly. We do see the Garbatox and Garbador come down onto the field. No item out yet on that Garbador, so we will not be seeing Garbatox and activate. But it looks like he might be eyeing that. Mm, there's, there's the Floatstone. The float double Puzzle of Time going to grab two cards, one being a double colorless. Potentially going for it, it looks like a second double colorless. Yep, yeah, might just want to get two of those energy cards back since he has had to discard so many of them. Such an important resource. Ends up going for the Drampa, dropping it right back down. And you know, this goes back to what I mentioned between games. I think that almost in order to win this matchup, Frank has to get a little behind and then in Ian to a low hand size and pull off a play where he goes Garbotoxin, and Righteous Edge, get rid of your energy and hope you don't draw any cards right. for a few turns. Both players shuffling up here. 
So Frank really valuing that Drampa GX, getting it back with those puzzles. Even though he's down at several energy at this point, maybe Ian can do something about trying to get rid of more of Frank's energy cards, continuing to disrupt Frank. Ian won't have any trades on his next turn to do it, though. Frank does still have his turn to play out. We'll see where he goes with it. And see what else he has. Six cards on Frank's side, only four for Ian. Ultra Ball comes out, can find another Zerua, and we're finally going to see more than one Zerua in play for Frank on this third game. Is, does, that is what he decides to grab. Certainly will hit the bench, will boost the damage from Rydus, beating by 10 more, but it also makes sure he can maybe get off another trade on the next turn if Ian is to field blower his floatstone. There's a single puzzle. Oh, no. Not what you want to be doing. He has already played two puzzles, so that means he will not be able to double puzzle anymore right. the rest of this game. And we're just going to see Aridus beating do 100 damage over to Ian's turn. Does he have the Field Blower? Can he get rid of that tool? Can he get access to his trade abilities? There's a Galissapod, at least. There's a DCE on to Zoark GX. And there is a Guzma to the Trubbish, it looks like. Wanting to value taking this Trubbish out, keeping Trashalanche out of play, so that Ian doesn't have to be as worried about playing his item cards. Frank's just going to immediately send up this Garbotoxin Garbodor. It does have that Flowstone attached. Sees an evolution of Zoark there, and is going to play a Professor Sycamore, drawing him a new hand of seven. Of course, cannot trade since those abilities are locked thanks to Garbodor. We'll see what Frank wants to do here. He could attack with Zoark and try to, you know, put some damage on Ian's side of the board. It looks like he's attempting to go for a uh, Ultra Ball. Something he's considering there, does use it, gets rid of two cards, looks like it was a Zorua, and maybe a Zorark GX, does find a Trubbish, gets that on the bench, is going to want to try to set up Trash Lanch. Ian, if you're going to keep knocking out my Trubbishes, I'm going to have to keep finding them. <laughs> Attaching a Rainbow Energy to that Drampa, and retreating... Looks like we may just see a Righteous Edge trying to manage Ian's energies in play. Over to Ian's side of the field. What does he have here? Ooh. Single puzzle from Ian. We have seen more single puzzles this weekend than I have seen in a while. And this is big for Ian. Does find the... Uh, Rain, excuse me, does find the Parallel City, gets rid of his own Tapu Lele and that Mew that had 50 damage on it, so that takes away a potential free two prizes for Frank. Oh. Let's see if Ian can find an energy or a way to retreat this Zoark in the active spot. He may be out of options, though. He has used a lot of energies already. I'm not sure about his flip stones. Um, I don't think he plays too many of them, and I think we've already seen that one in play. Right. Ian looking through his his discard right now, back to his hand, trying to figure out exactly what he wants to do right now. He ends up going for the field blower, discarding that float stone off the Garbatoxin Garbador, and now Garbatoxin is offline. Yep, now trade is active once again. Ian has access to up to four cards this turn, six if he can find another Zoark GX. We'll see if he can find a way to move his active. Doesn't look like it yet. Max Potion, Potion though, will actually heal the damage off of that Zoark GX on the bench, taking away the damage Frank has worked so hard for. You know, this is a lot different, this type of matchup, a lot different than what we've seen a lot on stream. What we've seen a lot have been Buzzwall decks, super fast, super aggressive, big knockouts back and forth. These Zorg mirror matches are much more intricate, much more grindy, a lot more 
you know, play back and forth, right. figuring out what your opponent's going to try to do, trying to manage resources effectively. A lot more intricate play in this top four game than we've seen. Definitely. There goes the Trash Ledge Garbodor, as well as a Floatstone Ooh. onto that Drampa. If Ian can find, excuse me, if Frank can find another tool to put on Garbodor, he could leave Ian with just three cards and might not be able to draw many more cards this game. Right. And if Frank finds a Rainbow Energy, he can start trash lanching and doing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. Ian has no energies in play on his side of the field. A lot of them have hit the discard pile. He's only going to find three cards here. Has played a lot of cards, gotten rid of a lot of supporters at this point. Here comes a trade for Frank. Of course, Ian did get rid of that tool with Field Blower the last turn, so Frank is going to have access to trade. Did put the Floatstone on to the Drampa, though, maybe wanting to move that into Trash Lunch Garbodor. It's interesting, though, he could have put it on the Garbotoxin to guarantee himself the lock, but maybe just wanted to make sure he could draw more cards off of the end. Definitely that, or the fact that he might want to get that Garb or that uh, Drampa out of the active at some point and bring in maybe that Zoroark or potentially that Garbato or Trash Lunch Garbodor. Absolutely. Trash Lynch, definitely something at this point in the game could be taking effect. Not totally sure on an item count, but I'm sure it is getting up there in numbers. So we see Ian shuffling Frank's deck. Going to place it back. Very small deck over on Frank's side of the field. Parallel City going to limit Ian's bench to three. Already and had the three down there. There we go with that Floatstone right back on that Governor. And Garbatoxin's online, no abilities. Frank does get that Rainbow Energy as well. Could choose to Trash Lanch, do some more damage to this Zorak GX. Actually, going to use Riotous Beating instead. Doing 120 damage. Going to set up a two-hit knockout here on Zorak GX. What does Ian have in this hand off of that in and that ability lock? Just a pass from Ian oh over to gosh. Frank's turn. Not looking good. Frank will be able to take a knockout here on Zoark GX. Have the tides turned for Frank? It looks like it. This is what I said I think Frank needed to do. In to low, Garbotoxin, Righteous Edge, make sure he has no energies in play. And Frank has been able to do that and get those knockouts where he's needed to. We're down to a four prize uh, game for Frank and three on Ian's side. Going to look at his discard pile. Maybe signifying he could have Puzzle of Times in his hand? Doesn't look like it yet. Did just send up that Galissapod this turn. Cannot get that extra first impression damage because it did not become from the bench to the active during Ian's turn. That phase was in between turns. Looks Here like it was just a pass from Ian. Frank did 120. Ian's going to draw. Might just be a pass. Frank does have very few cards left in his deck. Can he take all of his prizes before he runs out of cards? We'll find out. See... Ian's currently just debating on what to do. Looks like he does have something he could potentially play, but not sure if it is totally worth it or not. Single Ooh. puzzle of time. See, it's always tricky if you want to play that single puzzle. Sure, you get to look at the top three, but there's a chance you could have top-decked a puzzle of time, which would then become an out. Right. Ian going to decide what to put on the top three of his deck after looking at Frank's discard pile here, rearranging these top three in a certain way so that he can draw what he wants in the next couple of turns. There's an Oranguru and a Grass Energy. Acerola bringing up that damaged Pokemon, allowing that Oranguru to come in as the active. Yes, and now resource management could come into play, putting back some of these important cards like Puzzle of Time, like DCE, Getting these energies back into the deck so that Ian has some sort of option this game. It looks like that's what it's going to be. Two DCEs and, excuse me, two Puzzle of Times and that DCE. Over here to Frank's turn, though. Only one card left in his deck, oh I gosh. believe. Very thin. If it's not one, it's two. It is very small over there on Frank's side. Is he going to be able to take all of his prizes in time? He can take a knockout here on this Oranguru, but then he would go down to three prizes left. And he might only have one more turn if he doesn't have any more ends left. Frank could deck out in this game three. We know he is out of Puzzle of Times. If he's already played all of his ends, he might not be able to do it. Oh. <laughs> 
Does look like he has a rainbow energy in hand, but not much else that can be helpful. He does end up taking that knockout on the Oranguru. We're going to see the Bridget here from Ian. Going to move the cards around in his deck. So this is the card Ian put on top of his deck after the Puzzle of Time. And this is actually a really smart play. He looked at his top three. He saw, man, there's no good cards here. Nothing that's going to get me out. Oh, but I can put this Bridget back. I'm going to Ace Rolla this turn. Next turn, what I can do is use a Ranguru, put three cards back that I want to draw. And then I'll use this Bridget, and that'll let me shuffle my deck. And now my order is random again. And I might have a better odds at top decking right. something I want. We have just hit under 20 minutes for the end of this top four match. Yeah, I would be very surprised if this game lasted that long, but, you know, time worth noting for sure. Now that I look, it does look like Frank does not have any cards left. <laughs> yes, it's this been a is long day. it. It certainly has been a long day. Frank taking a look at his discard pile. He does have Rescue oh Stretcher. That puts three cards back, and that gives Frank three more turns. Going to offer that three-card deck to Ian to cut. Ian's going to make sure they're nice and randomized. No order is known at this point. Frank checking what resources Ian has. This is an extremely close match between two extremely talented players. Two, both of these guys have had success at the regional champion level. Both of these guys are regional champions themselves. So it's going to be interesting to see how this top four match finishes up. 120 damage going on to Glissopod GX on Ian's side. Floatstone, gonna move it to the bench. Just a pass oh. from Ian. Frank's gonna Guzma. get the Guzma. That is massive here. Frank can bring up this Garbodor. He can retreat, and now he will go down to just one prize card remaining after using this ride as beating for 120 more damage. But not before using a field blower to remove that choice ban off that bench Zora. That also puts one more item in the discard pile. One more item will also go in the discard pile because this is going to get knocked out here. This uh, Glissopod, I mean. Frank going to play an Ultra Ball here. Very smart play here. We know he has very few cards left in his deck. But something that could potentially let Ian get back into this game is if Ian was able to end Frank into an unusable hand. So he's going to thin out his deck, make sure that he you know, doesn't have these clunkier cards in his hand that he hasn't been able to do anything with. He's just going to discard them so they're not uh, hindering him anymore. And here we go. Frank is down to one prize card, three in deck. Just a pass from Ian. Uh, Guzma for the game. Ready. Frank Diaz has won the top four match and is going to be moving on to the finals here in the Toronto TCG region.